Thank you. So I'm, my name is Gar Garen Smith. I work for Telespazio UK as the technical architect, and this presentation is about EarthCode. Uh, Telespazio, the prime contractor for EarthCode, and this presentation, in a way, is a follow-up to the, um, the presentation yesterday uh, by Inga, uh, and I'll talk a bit about, more about the, the implementation concepts behind EarthCode. So, um, some background. Um, the future e, uh, EO Independent Science Review uh, 2022 recommendations were made to have more visibility, discoverability, and usability of science results, leveraging interoperability and science, open science tools, and improving communication and community building. Uh, the scientific community feedback at the Science Strategy Workshop in 2023, it was stated that ESA uh, to support fair and reproducible open science practices uh, and com uh, complementing the scientific processes by software development best practice. Uh, and EarthCode, or Earth Science Collaborative Open Development Environments, is a response to these uh, recommendations. Overall, the aim of EarthCode, or the portal, is to help users create scientific workflows that are experiments and publish them to a repository after they've been verified so that experiments can seamlessly be reused and spec with specified data and the necessary infrastructure according to fair open science principles, engaging with the relevant communities to further science. And I guess this is helped by following best practice where the data within EarthCode um, is open, including the inputs and the outputs, inputs necessary in order to enable reproducibility. Um, EarthCode aims to support open source code and then link both the, the code uh, and the executable data and, and data uh, in order to uh, enable reproducibility. Open access will be provided not only to the experiments and the data, but also to the underlying documentation describing the workflows. And that's then supported by um, FAIR principles where uh, artifacts ingested into the EarthCode catalog will be uh, discoverable and accessible uh, and also reproducible. Uh, the use of education and implementation of best practice will also help support interoperability. Uh, we, we use a lot of the underlying principles from EOEPCA Plus, which we'll talk about later on, uh, that help um, support interoperability through best practice and also underlying building blocks that help enable interoperability. Uh, and work, uh, EarthCode also has a, a specialized work stream to support the community, which I'll come to later on. So uh, for regarding EarthCode strategy, we can consider um, the use cases by looking at two uh, main roles. One of the scientist contributor. Uh, the scientist contributor will um, enable, EarthCode will provide a number of use cases to support the scientist contributor. Uh, one will be access to compute resources. Uh, and those compute resources will allow uh, scientists to develop and then execute uh, their experiments in a location close to the data uh, with um, sufficient compute resource. Once an experiment has been completed, uh, then EarthCode will provide the facility to publish experiments and then interact with the community. For the scientist user, uh, EarthCode will support um, finding existing experiments uh, and data, um, the ability to access experiments and data, and then uh, reuse those, those experiments, either through uh, reproducibility, uh, reproducing an existing experiment, or making modifications uh, to further science. Uh, interoperability, interoperability will be supported, uh, as I mentioned before, through the use of best practice uh, and some of the uh, eWebCA uh, building blocks. And again, there'll be interaction with the community through Workstream 3. Uh, if we look at the overall um, strategy, we can break down the, some of the basic building blocks within EarthCode. Uh, I should also mention that um, ESA R&D projects will be required to publish to EarthCode, uh, so there will be um, a good population of the catalog. If we break down the overall strategy, uh, we can see that the, the portal will be provided as a, a single point of entry to EarthCode, which will give access to the underlying platforms uh, that EarthCode will provide. Uh, nor uh, will be used to provide credits to access the underlying platforms to help develop and execute the experiments. Platform com compute will be provided, um, yeah, as I said, to develop workflows and then execute those workflows. Publishing will be provided um, via GitHub. 
uh, and when um, artifacts are accepted, they'll be moved into the catalog so that they can be discovered and accessed at a later point. Uh, and dashboard of views will be provided in order to uh, present experiments in a, uh, a way that's suitable to end users. So we can look at the conceptual architecture behind Earth Code uh, and looking how the, the project will be broken down. So there are a number of work streams or three work streams within Earth Code. Work stream one will provide one or more platforms to host uh, workflows with large uh, compute capability near the data. Uh, work stream two will provide capability for one or more platforms to develop workflows that can then be executed on work stream one. Uh, and then finally, work stream three will help develop a science user community based through the catalog uh, and work with uh, the, yeah, the community, but also to help um, identify future needs uh, for, for Earth Code. It's probably worth saying that um, the output from work stream two, which will be um, experiments can be published through GitHub uh, and once they've been accepted they'll be um, moved into the Open Science Catalog. Uh, the same work workflows can also be then deployed to uh, the Workstream 1 infrastructure where there's um, sufficient compute resource and uh, large volumes of data and then finally when the workflows are deployed and executed the products that result uh, can then be uh, well the metadata can then be fed into GitHub uh, and then uh, once accepted will find its way into the Open Science Catalog. One of the um, underlying concepts of um, Earth Code is the, the use and reuse of eWebca Plus building blocks. Uh, so eWebca Plus uh, is a, a project that's designed to create building blocks to um, support platform development, uh, including Earth Code, but also other projects like uh, Apex. It supports building block interoperability. So the building blocks that are delivered uh, by eWebca Plus are designed to collaborate and work together they also support uh, underlying federation of platforms. Uh, so the use of EWEC Plus uh, will help um, yeah, eventual federation and collaboration between the underlying platforms that Earth Code provides. Uh, EWEC Plus is also informed by the utilization domains of which Earth Code is one. Uh, Apex is also uh, another utilization domain. And we meet regularly with the EWEC Plus team to look at the work they're doing and also to guide uh, the backlog and um, define requirements that we have. Um, eWebca Plus also looks at processing workflow consolidation. So they're looking at uh, OGC API processes and OpenEO, but also looking at how those um, two processes can collaborate and the p potential for OGC API processes to communicate with OpenEO and, and vice versa. Uh, they're also looking at data cubes and machine learning um, so that there's potential to have a machine learning um, Workstream 1 and Workstream 2, and also open science uh, best practice. So a lot of the, the work we're doing, and I'll talk about later on regarding the use of stack uh, and OGC, OGC API records is informed by uh, um, eWebca Plus. Uh, and that's uh, been very helpful so far. So uh, eWebca Plus building blocks will be used within the Earth Code architecture. And this happens in a number of places. So some examples would be the use of the registration, uh, resource registration building block within the, the catalog. And that's used to ingest artifacts, and, uh, including stack items, OGC API records. We also use the discovery uh, building block in, in the Open Science catalog in order to discover um, artifacts that have been ingested. Uh, eWebca Plus are currently developing a resource health building block, which will be used to monitor the uh, operational characteristics of the new platforms. Firstly, to make sure they're available and online, but secondly, um, we'll start to confirm that the, the capability that they are providing is, is operational, including things like um, the workflow capability is, is operating correctly as well. Also, there's a data access building block, which is currently used to implement the access capability of the Open Science Catalog, and could also be used by uh, Workstream 1 infrastructure as well. So if you start to break down the high-level um, architectural implementation of Earth Code, uh, we are currently going through a best practice procurement where we are selecting one or more experiments that, uh, or platforms that can um, implement Workstream 2. Um, they'll be selecting a number of platforms that allow Workstream 1 to be implemented. 
Um, once uh, we've done that, we'll then um, allow those platforms, existing platforms, to publish experiments to the Open Science Catalogue. Uh, we'll use GitHub as a single sign-on mechanism for the integrated user journey. So all of the platforms that uh, we're selecting will have GitHub um, implementation um, already. Uh, and that will mean there'll be a single sign-on and hopefully a, a, an easy user journey. Once we've deployed the, the platforms, we'll then start to look at exposing the service layers of, of those platforms to allow interoperability, federated solutions, and collaboration between platforms. All of that will be um, in, um, supported by the use of community standards. So there are some guiding principles that we'll be following. Um, the EarthCode portal will be implemented by EOX using EOX Hub. Uh, the expectation is to, or what we'll be doing is reusing existing platforms. So EarthCode is not about developing uh, new platforms to develop workflows or, and execute those workflows. It's about taking existing platforms and integrating them into um, yeah, the, a, a single solution. So we're looking at integration rather than development. Platforms will be maintained by the, the current operators um, and users will be able to gain access to the platforms through the ESA NOR. Uh, and the expectation is that we're done on a platform by platform basis, although it's possible in the future that we may have a, uh, a mechanism where users can purchase NOR credits but then use them on the platforms of their choice. Uh, and as I mentioned before, we'll use EWACRA Plus building blocks where appropriate. So there are a number, uh, in terms of the implementation, uh, there are a number of phases to implementation. Phase one will concentrate on platform integration, as I've mentioned. And that will start by reusing the uh, EOX hub. We'll reuse a number of exploitation platforms identified in Workstream 2. We'll then add in a number of um, workflow development platforms as part of Workstream 2 and support scientists to create workflows using those platforms. Uh, we'll then reuse the Open Science Catalog, which will be rebranded as the EarthCode Catalog. Uh, and also we'll uh, develop a Workstream a community platform, Workstream 3, uh, to engage the community. Uh, as I mentioned before, single sign-on using GitHub will be used to enable the publishing uh, of products and experiments. And it's, it's probably worth mentioning as well that through the use of GitHub, we, um, there may be some projects that don't use uh, EarthCode. So in the case of some scientists may decide to develop locally, now that being the case, it's still possible to publish experiments uh, and data directly into GitHub. Um, if, uh, if that is the case, then it would need to conform to stack and OGC API record specifications. Uh, that may suit some people. If not, then we'll also provide the capability uh, to have a GUI through the portal, which will also allow direct um, deployments of experiments uh, and data uh, and then the portal will ensure that, that um, the data that's captured is converted into a well-formed stack or OGC pair records item. Uh, during phase two, we'll start to look at platform enhancement stories and platform collaboration stories. So during uh, phase one, we'll start to work on the ex exposing a number of service layers that can be then be used for interoperability. We'll also have uh, a discussion about standards within the platform providers so that we can look forward to the increasing possibility of collaboration. Uh, platform interoperability will look at the use of interoperability of workflows and also of data. So it may be that a, a workflow developed originally to work um, and execute on platform one could in, in the future be executed on other platforms. Um, to allow users a choice of where they, they run the experiments. Uh, and also there'll be a possibility to allow interoperability of data uh, where platforms can start to share data with each other. Platform federation is also possible. Um, so through the use of some of the eWebCA Plus initiatives, it may be that, for instance, a, an OGC API process could communicate with um, an open EO process and vice versa. Uh, and also we'll look at exposing the service, um, the service layer capability by the portal. So for instance, it might be that the port, whoops, it might be that the, the portal discovers a, um, an experiment within the catalog 
Uh, that catalogue will describe the experiment and also probably where the experiment was originally developed, uh, but it may be that the, the catalogue would also uh, define other, um, other platforms that experiment could be run on, and it would then handle the, the reproducibility of that experiment on behalf of the user um, selecting one or more alternative platforms. Uh, and finally, uh, we're also looking at the integration of the ESA project results repository. Uh, and this will provide capability to preserve projects, um, both the products, uh, but also the input data for those projects and products. And that helps uh, the potential um, to support reproducibility in the future. Because if um, a user discovers a workflow uh, and they want to run it on the platform of their choice, um, if we have an exact copy of the input data stored in a safe location, we can then uh, uh, reuse that input data on a, a platform of the user's choice, uh, therefore hopefully um, increasing the reproducibility and the success of the reproducibility of, of an experiment. So platform interoperability um, depends upon standards uh, and a common understanding of those standards. So there are some concepts that EarthCode um, relies upon. One is the concept of a workflow, which is a, a formal wrapper for scientific code that can uh, run a specified container or environment on the cloud. And typically this workflow can be configured with the input data or other settings before execution. The code may have been developed locally uh, or on the cloud using languages like Python or R and maybe a machine learning language. So that a workflow uh, in a sense is a generic implementation. And then if we look at um, the workflow is likely to be developed within Workstream, or will be developed in Workstream 2. Uh, an experiment, then, is a collection of technical artifacts that describe a, uh, an experiment and how to reproduce an experiment. Typically, the experiments are defined using a specific implementation of a workflow. Uh, so, in that sense, a workflow is a generic uh, uh, concept, and an experiment is a specific implementation of that workflow. Uh, the, work the experiments could initially be um, created uh, on Workstream 2, but it's likely that in the long term they'll be run on Workstream 1 where there's extra um, compute capability and also um, more data. And then finally, the, the product is the output of this scientific experiment, which again is likely to be um, stored on Workstream 1. So if we start to look at the concepts of workflows, experiments, and products, and look at the relationship between those, those concepts, um, a workflow could have a number of implementations. So for instance, uh, a workflow could depend upon the process graph, and that process graph could depend upon the underlying source code. But there may be other uh, workflow implementa implementations. Uh, so a workflow could be implemented using CWL, again, with underlying source code, or it may be a workflow uses some form of unstructured um, uh, yeah, um, concepts, such as uh, a dependency on Python. Once a workflow has been created, that can help uh, form the implementation of an experiment. So an experiment will depend upon a workflow, but also the configuration for that, uh, that workflow and also the input data. And then once we've got an, uh, an experiment defined, uh, that experiment can be rerun and reproduced to create a product which is then dependent upon that experiment. Uh, and then finally, we can have the concept of an application. An application can be used to um, execute an experiment in a user-friendly manner. But also, um, an application could also be a front end to uh, a workflow. Uh, a workflow uh, being generic in nature would then require um, a configurable number of inputs. So a user could discover an experiment, uh, reproduce that experiment, or decide to make changes to the original experiments through um, the use of an application driving the underlying workflow. So when we, we consider the um, description of these workflows, experiments, and applications, uh, and also the products and input data, we need to find a, a formal way of describing them. So within EarthCode, uh, we uh, will be using OGC API records to describe applications, experiments, uh, and workflows. And then the underlying data, both input and products, will be described using stack. Um, another thing that's, um, I think, a, a, a key success factor within EarthCode is the ability to take um, code developed by scientists and wrap it in a workflow, because uh, scientists are keen uh, on their um, 
their preferred source of source code, uh, and it isn't um, it isn't necessarily something that a scientist wants to do and get involved in the transition of their code into CWL or a process graph. Um, so we, we're looking at providing tools to help support that process. Now that's something that's a challenge for Earth Code, but also supported by EWEPCA Plus, which is looking at providing uh, tools to yeah, support, um, support that process. And then finally, we're looking at um, another ways to help manage the data that um, is required by scientists. And that's quite a large topic, but it could include the use of federation uh, to find data. It could include the labeling of data in terms of the quality of data. Uh, and yeah, and so on. So in, in summary, um, EarthCode will support reproducible uh, open science, uh, supports underlying fair principles, supports the software development best practice, uh, the publishing of scientific experiments, and then the reuse of existing platforms through user stories grouped by integration of existing platforms, enhancements of those platforms, and then collaboration between platforms. The the project is about to kick off in, imminently. We're still subject to best practice, so we can't announce the platforms that have been selected, but we should be able to um, announce that within the next uh, few weeks, I would hope. Thank you.